Hi friends! There's two men in sacred history who had a remarkably similar beginning, but while one was called a man after God's own heart, the other one died in disgrace and was rejected of God. I'm talking about David and Saul. And in this tale of two kings, they had so many similarities, but they ended up so differently. And I want to know why. They were both from a humble family, chosen from God and anointed by Samuel. Both had the spirit of God upon them and both became king. But Saul was rejected of God, while David had one of the closest and most special relationships with God in the Bible. The similarities between Saul and David go beyond just the good things. They both did a lot of bad things. They both committed murder. They both disobeyed direct commands of God. And the list could go on and on. But if they both did all these bad things, why such a different outcome between them? Well, when they messed up, they would both admit they were wrong, but it was what happened next that made the difference. And I'm talking about taking responsibility for mistakes. When Saul would mess up and be confronted with his disobedience, he would reluctantly admit that he'd done wrong, but he seems to have always had a reason for why he did what he did. In other words, he was really good at excuses, and usually those excuses involved other people. He was continually playing the blame game. For instance, when Saul got impatient and went ahead with the sacrifice at Gilgal without waiting for Samuel. When Samuel asked him, what have you done? We see Saul refusing to take responsibility for his mistake and instead he blames everyone else. He says, it's the soldiers' fault. They were deserting the army and I had to do something. Then he casts blame on Samuel. He says, you didn't come within the days appointed. It's your fault, Samuel, for not coming quickly enough. And then it was also the Philistines' fault. The Philistines will now come on me at Gilgal, and I've not made supplication to the Lord, therefore I felt compelled and offered a burnt offering. So he casts blame at all these others and then plays himself as a victim of circumstances. I was compelled to do it. He wasn't really sorry for what he had done, was he? And he wasn't man enough to take responsibility for it. And this is a pattern that you'll see with Saul. And what was the outcome? Samuel said, because you've rejected the word of the Lord, he also has rejected you from being king. So sad. Now, David was also a man of many mistakes, and some of them huge. Some of them to the point at which we wonder, how could anyone who did these terrible things have been so beloved of God? But I believe the answer lies in how David responded to his mistakes. And I think it gives us tremendous hope for ourselves, too. When David realized he'd done wrong, he was genuinely sorry. Instead of making excuses and playing the blame game and all that, David stepped up like a man and took responsibility for his mistakes and for the consequences which might follow. For instance, when the prophet Nathan called out the disastrous Bathsheba affair, no excuses came from David's mouth. No belittling of his sin. With a broken heart, he humbly acknowledged, I have sinned against the Lord. It was that simple. And God forgave him. When David disobeyed by enumerating the people, he said, I have sinned greatly in what I have done, but now I pray, O Lord, take away the iniquity of your servant, for I have done very foolishly. Simple ownership of his wrong, no excuses, no belittling what was done, genuine sorrow for what was done. And then he accepted the consequences. One other thing I noticed, it seems that when David repented of a sin, he generally turned away from repeating it. We don't read of a second Bathsheba type affair or a second Uriah type murder or a second enumeration of the people and so on. He seems to have learned from his mistakes. So I hope this is as encouraging to you as it was to me, because if David, a man who murdered, committed adultery, disobeyed direct commands from God, could be called a man after God's own heart, then there's hope for me and hope for you. But let's learn from David's story. Let's take responsibility for our wrongs. No blame games, no excuses, no belittling what we've done. Simple ownership of our mistakes. Genuine sorrow for how they've hurt God and other people. And then in the strength of Christ, let's make these mistakes a lighthouse to warn us away from ever repeating them again. It's the Psalms 51 kind of repentance that God is wanting to impart to us. And when we accept it, we too can be accepted by God as David was through the blood of Christ. Have a great week.